and just hoofed my compost like 14 blocks or so. It's kind of heavy today, but I always bring my compost to the farmer's market and it's a fairly nice day. Oh, and it looks like uh, the park just got opened up again. That's fun. All right, we're gonna check out the farmer's market, but today the goal is to show you some more of my peperomia. Got to do this a little bit more vlog style, a little bit more informal. I did two episodes on peperomia. It was only a small section of my peperomia collection, so I thought I'd show you my peperomia and where they are in my house. I figured I'll pick up something relatively quick to eat. I could check out uh, some of the pep questions that have come through via YouTube and Instagram. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate that. What is the best soil? Someone says they've never heard anybody talk about the smell of the rat tails, meaning the flowers. And it's a very subtle smell. Someone asked where I got my chicken pot from, my chicken planter. I got that off of Etsy. I love that planter. Obviously got it after I got Kippy. Deepa asks, could you please also show where you place each plant in the house so that we get an idea? That is precisely what we're going to be doing today. Okay, I'm going to clean out the broccoli in my teeth, and I think I got a good handle of what people are asking as far as pepperomia goes. So I'm going to head back home, and we're going to look at some of my pepperomia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Speaking of peps, this is a Peperomia Hoffmania, and it's a really flush one. You can see the uh, little Peperomia flowers. I have this one, I put it in my biopod, but I think that was a mistake because I haven't seen it in my biopod in a very long time. This one's gorgeous. So I promised that I would show you guys some peperomia in my house in their natural habitat. But you'll see that I have my watermelon peperomia here. This is actually on my windowsill and I noticed it started getting this brown underneath the leaves. You see it hasn't really affected the tops of the leaves but the bottoms of the leaves are getting brown and I think it was just getting too cold on my windowsill. So I moved it here. It's doing swimmingly well. I have my Peperomia polybotria here as well, past the Pachira aquatica, and this is very gentle light. It's like northeast facing light, and I get some ambient light from the lights above. Actually, I think that light bulb is out, or actually it's probably on this. So I have some ambient light that comes in, and some northeast light. And this is a pretty gentle light and pretty perfect for my peperomia. I probably water them close to like once a week. So it's not that frequent. And you'll see that I have some more peperomia here. I actually just switched up some of my plants, but kept the peperomia. This is uh, peperomia hope and peperomia kimnachii, peperomia tetraphylla, peperomia cubensis right here. All of these have been growing very well. Peperomia clover, also right here. Oh, there's one right up here. And uh, somebody had asked actually that their Peperomia prescifolia has been drooping, but I think Peperomia prescifolia actually droop. I don't think if you're, if you're giving it maybe top-down lighting, it'll grow up, but I think my experience with a lot of the peperomia that kind of droop down, I just ripped off a leaf, uh, is that they're just trying to get a little bit more light and maybe they're not getting a tremendous amount of light, but it is a healthy plant. It's not like it's turning brown or anything like that, but I really like the prescifolia. I think that they are a meatier version of um, some peperomia. Doing a quick scan. Oh, here's some peperomia. These are growing pretty much in the dark. <laughs> Um, I've, I found that my pileas actually grow extremely well here in very little light, 
but this is a Peperomia caparata, so is this one. I'm kind of testing them out here. I think I'd probably want to add a little bit more light here for them, but these are generally okay with some of the ambient light. This I've already showed to you, my Peperomia metallica. This has been in my vertical garden for quite some time. It's a slow grower, but you can see it's kind of shooting out some of its stems and growing extremely well in this condition. Again, it's, it's pretty close to this northeast facing window, so it gets a lot of gentle light. And I probably water this maybe twice a week, more or less. It really depends. I mean, you really water in relation to the amount and the intensity of light that a plant is often getting. And, um, you know, and I tend to, somebody asked about the soil that I use, and I tend to always use a little bit more well-draining soil no matter what my plant is. So I'm always kind of adding perlite or lava stones or something to my soil, just amending it a little bit if it's just a regular potting mix, just because I just never want my plants sitting in wet feet if I don't if they don't have to be. Here's another Peperomia parescifolia. You could see that it's starting to droop down in some cases. And again, I don't think that means that the plant is unhappy or anything along those lines. It's just that it's probably one of the ways that it grows. You'll notice that Peperomia tetragona also grows this way. This is a little dry, so I probably will need to, to water this one, but Again, I think it's a beautiful plant. The internodes are starting to get a little longer, as you could probably see here, although this one's quite short. So this might mean that it is, you know, reaching for a little bit more light. Might be better under a grow light. Some of the ways that you could tell your peperomia needs watering, I mean, it may droop, but it may also droop if you overwater it. Um, in some cases, you might see the leaves start to pucker, but it really depends on the peperomia because you have some really succulent versions of peperomia, and then you have some that are a little bit more semi-succulent. But a good way is to also just kind of get a sense. You could uh, pull on the plant a little bit, and you could see that this is pretty, pretty dry in here. The whole thing is actually pretty dry. And uh, you might want to give it a good you know, soaking and let the water flow out of it. And that should be enough for this peperomia to... Uh, for, for a little while because again, it's not getting really intense light. So I wouldn't want to be overwatering this plant All right, let's move it back here. Oh Before we move it back here. I have some new peperomia Somebody had asked about the Meridiana Which I just actually received so I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with this one but I'm kind of looking at these as potential ones for a terrarium. Um, which one is this one? I can't even remember what this one is. Persilata. So these kind of, I don't know, to me they kind of look a little bit more like, this one looks a little bit more like Fraseri. And this one looks like it would grow really well in a terrarium, but I could be completely wrong. So I'd have to do a little bit more research on their natural history. But I did get some plants here for a little bit more terrarium growing. Which, actually, I could take you back, speaking of that, to my terrarium. Or polydarium, or whatever you want to call it. I'm a little embarrassed by how it looks because it is completely overgrown. Because these conditions are so right for so many plants, they grow extremely well. As you can see, I have some kind of growing out the mesh into the light here. My peliona, peleonias are going crazy, like look at this. But the problem is I've planted so many plants in here and I have no idea where they've gone. Like my Hoffmania, which is like my centerpiece, I think has been completely engulfed by other plants. And I actually, somebody asked also about my Hoffmania and I had my Hoffmania growing here. Strangely enough, we found a Hoffmania at the place that I was eating at. Some have done extremely well um, let me see. This is my Anthurium scandens, actually. Okay, so this one, this little fuzzy peperomia, I got from NSE Tropicals. It was growing in her green wall and in some of her other plants. That's what the funny thing is, like a lot of these peperomias, they're just growing in other pots of plants. And this one's a cool one right back here. Peperomia turboensis, that's grown really well, but it's also probably because I gave it a back wall with sphagnum and 
This one's, I love it because it's like that little silver. It looks like my philodendron brantianum, which is somewhere back here. The conditions in here are quite perfect for a lot of peperomia because it is nice, it, it's nice light, but the plants can hide under, you know, in some of the shade if they need it. And it has higher humidity and it will literally water itself when it needs in order to be able to create these like jungle-like conditions where a lot of peperomia live because a lot of peperomia live pantropically in the tropics. So this is kind of like a set it and forget it to a certain extent because as you could see, I really need to cut this back. And there are probably more peperomia back here that I just, I can't even get into. So that will have to be another episode in the future. All right, so I have some peperomia here. This is my Peperomia elongata. You can see that the leaves are growing very horizontal to the ground, probably to take in some of the light. Again, a lot of these Peperomia are very used to growing on the forest floor. So this one is, to my knowledge, it looks like it's like pushing its leaves down in order to be able to get some of this light because there's not a tremendous amount of light here. And the kinds of plants that I'm growing here are a little bit more Ripsalis. Peperomia. I actually started growing some Hoya and experimenting with Hoya here. That will have to be another upcoming episode, but the Hoya didn't grow as well. Oh, geez, look at this. This Ripsalis is blooming. That's super cool. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked, but that's pretty neat. And, um, and then I have this Peperomia Silver Frost right here, which seems to be doing well. It's a little, I feel it's a little droopy. So it probably needs a little bit of um, water because I don't think this has been watered and it feels very dry. You could also take out the pot and if the pot doesn't feel heavy when like, be, notice when you put water into the pot and then how heavy it actually gets. And it's almost like a feel for the plant as opposed to sometimes it's just a science. So you could put a water gauge meter in there as well, but as you start to get a feel for your plants, you might recognize whether they need water or not. This whole area actually needs a little bit of water, so I, I could see some of my plants are actually drooping. Um, here, here's a Peperomia scandens being attacked by another plant. This one looks like he's coming out a little bit. Uh, I have a huge variegata version that I'm gonna have to show you, but this was just, just a regular Peperomia scandens, and you could see that it's like a scandens. It's kind of growing along on the ground. And uh, here's another Peperomia parescifolia that I had grown by, by root. Oh, and you can see it's actually has a little flower on top of it. That's so funny because I, I rooted this up from a, a cutting that I got from Steve's leaves. Look at that little flower. I don't smell anything yet, but it's uh, really beautiful. So this is actually a southwest facing window. And so the light is pretty crazy. It's kind of pouring in here and it has also a grow light. So these plants are getting a pretty good or decent light, I would say. And um, plants could dry out very quickly here. So I have to be on top of watering, which is why I have humidity mats here. But usually the second shelf starts to get a little bit more drought stricken. Here's um, a, a one. It's Peperomia bamboo stalks. This one's a nice succulent version. You could see these really beautiful ribs along the internodes. And this one's a much more succulent version. So you don't want to give this too much humidity because if you get too much humidity, it'll start to rot a little bit. And I have to be very careful because this is a humidifier. So I will probably end up moving this one. And I just want to let you know that if you're not giving it a lot of like great top down light, it's internodes start to get be become very long and they start to droop over. So you might want to cut it back or keep it relatively short. <laughs> so I'm probably going to push this if I could find a spot underneath one of my grow lights in the workroom, which I'll show you because I have some peperomia growing there that um, grow fairly well. I think the challenge is like a lot of my Peperomia, where I was growing a lot of my Peperomia, I'm growing Hoyas because Hoyas seem to grow very well where I was growing my Peperomia. So I just have to, you know, you have to, you have to make space. And unfortunately, you know, when I have a lot of plants growing already, it's, it's hard to make space. 
Here's a little peperomia here. This is a Dulliberformis, but you'll notice actually as they get older and older, they start to become woodier. And some of the Dulliberformis I'll show you are much more succulent and some are a little bit more flat. This one is also probably pretty dry. Let me see. Oh, here's um, belly button peperomia, peperomia verticillata. This one is again in like southwest facing windows. So it's getting some light, but it's like a little bit more of a gentle light compared to the spring or summer months because I would probably remove that in when it gets to be too spring or summer because that one would probably burn a little bit. I don't like to keep a lot of my peperomia into that bright light. The Dulliberformis is, will dry out very easily compared to some of my other succulent plants. So it's probably better if you pull that away. I'll show you where some of my other Dulliberformis is growing. Alright, so we'll go in here and you'll notice I have only really a grow light right here from Soltech Solutions. I'll, I'll leave a link to this. And I'm actually growing philodendrons, raphidophoras, and of course peperomia here. And you'll see this is my peperomia dalstedii. This was actually in, this particular one was in my kitchen. A little bit further away from the northeast facing window and was dropping leaves like mad and I already had a peperomia delstedii this one that was growing in here and it was growing extremely well under the grow lights and so I quickly moved this one in here and da 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 saved it <laughs> saved it because it was um, like I said it was losing leaves and oftentimes a plant will lose a lot of leaves if it was not getting the same amount of light that it was getting or the same conditions even that it was getting in the greenhouse, which again is really hard to, to recreate, especially because like, you know, you have to gently acclimatize a plant to your home, especially if you have like drier conditions or um, less light conditions. Right back here, you might be able to see this Peperomia viridis variegata, and that has been growing again here for, for quite some time. I have this little light that I could turn on too. That helps, you know, every little bit of light helps, but again, this is very high light, but as soon as you hit here, you're probably in a medium light area. And again, by the time you hit here, it's probably medium to low light area. Like I said, peperomia don't need a tremendous amount of light. So growing under a grow light in the interior of your space is totally fine for a lot of peperomia. All right, let's see what else I have. Oh, here, this one's a relatively new one. I've had this growing under my ficus now for a little over a month, probably a month and a half. This leaf is a little brown, probably just got dry. Um, this is something that you could actually probably cut off if I had a pair of scissors right now, I'd cut this off. This is Peperomia rana verde. I think it's actually a relatively new cultivar because I haven't seen it before. I, you know, I don't overwater this. I mean, I have my fig tree, of course, but I have all these other plants kind of growing underneath this. this is Aglionema, Philodendron. I have some Calathea here. And this one's growing extremely well. I think it's probably used to, even though it's a cultivar, Peperomia are often used growing on the forest floor or in rocky crags or in wood. And so this is probably um, accustomed to growing under this. It's a nice dark leaf, which kind of tells me that it has a lot of chlorophyll in, so it could probably handle being in a slightly less light condition. So love this one so far. It's a beautiful cultivar. This is my Peperomia quadrangularis, and it has been growing here in this pot for three, four, five years. I have no idea now anymore. It, I've never like really moved it from this corner, and it's growing extremely well. So it's, uh, it's definitely one of my favorite peperomias and I treat it much more like a succulent like I'm not watering this very often maybe again once a week and I'm not this doesn't have a hole in the bottom so I'm very gen gentle with watering it like I'm not watering it so that it has like a bunch of water sitting on the bottom um, so I, I just I'm a little bit more mindful I guess there's fair array right here and my incana which probably could look a little bit better. But again, these are in a southwest facing window, probably, what is this, about three feet away from a southwest facing window. And 
don't know, they seem to be doing fairly well. I kind of move these now and again. A lot of these on the bottom get kicked over a lot, so they get a bit mistreated compared to the ones that are, you know, up here and that are um, receiving a little bit more attention. I notice this one has a mealy bug on it, so I'm gonna have to come in here and, and do some mealy bug, kicking some mealy bugs bums. All right, and then if we over here, we have um, Peperomia glabella, which I think this is a little bit better as a terrarium plant, but this has been growing in this pot without drainage for quite some time. I rarely overwater my Peperomia. And in most cases, I default to watering less than more. <sighs> All right, let's, I'm just doing quick scans to see like if I'm missing any Peperomia. This is a uh, Peperomia ruby cascade, which is a relatively new one for me. It's really succulent and a nice kind of hanging basket. I'm also cutting off its leaves to see if I could actually do cuttings of this particular plant. I'm not quite sure how well it propagates, but I'm gonna give it a shot, especially like in my situation, I don't have like the best propagation station here set up, but. Here is my Peperomia scandens variegata. It is a massive plant. I used to have an H. cananthus kind of here, but it shed like a sheepdog. Didn't grow really well in that space that I put it in. Maybe it was getting too much sunlight, but for whatever reason, this Peperomia scandens variegata grows extremely well. You could see it, gets, it starts to shade itself out and it might get some like brown leaves here and there and some crispy bits, but that's kind of what you get when you have something that's so full and it's you know shading itself out and shading some other plants out as well so that's a really great great plant i mean it's i'm so happy that it's it's happy here and you could see again southwest facing window coming in but this one's on the furthest side of the shelf from the southwest facing window so really great position for it i i almost like don't want to touch the plants if they're growing so well in that particular condition if you come over here, I have my Peperomia blonda right here and my Peperomia obtusifolia right here, facing a southwest facing window, but kind of shielded by this box and it grows really well there. So I'm not gonna complain. I'm gonna keep it there. Again, how much do I water these? Maybe like once a week in the summer, maybe it has to be a little bit more because the light becomes really intense in this room. Um, another Peperomia obtusifolia here. You could see another variegata back here. And if you come down here, you'll see a Peperomia caparata. This is needs a little bit of water. It's definitely, my water day is usually tomorrow where I go um, gangbusters, but uh, for right now, I, I'm looking at some of these and I'm like, oh, you need a little bit of water. And here are some of my Peperomia deliberformis, and you can see how they have like different variations. Like this one has a much thinner, flatter leaf. This one's a little bit more um, smaller and, you know, almost like crested in a way. This is Axillaris, or Asperula, sorry, Asperula. And uh, this one's a deliberformis as well. And you could see that this like epidermis it's kind of like a taco or a hot pocket stuffed uh, of epidermis and it's, it's got this cuticle. And again, this is sort of from a southwest facing window but not directly in a southwest facing window and it is just kind of like sitting here in a little bit of shade. And I find that kind of works a little, uh, you know, much better for peperomia. Here you'll see my gravelins right here. It's always been kind of shoved here. I used to have a Gravelins in my bathroom, but it didn't really do well. I think this needs a little bit more light than some of my other Peperomia that I have in Northeast facing windows. And I have some Polzii and some Rubella back here. That's again, kind of stuffed. I do kind of forget about them, but they don't mind being forgotten about because they're Peperomia and they don't always need to be loved the way that we love the rest of our plants. Oh, completely missed Peperomid Jamesoniana. This has always been growing in this window and it has seemed to do well with the cold because this gets really drafty here. And then I have some Peperomia kind of growing here, also fighting off some uh, mealy bugs that I've found kind of growing into these um, on these plants. Oh, see, here's a mealy bug right here. 
Yeah, I've had um, some mealybugs on the, the crassula here on the jade, and I went ahead and still planted plants in there. Mealybugs tend to look like you have underwatered your plant. It'll start to make the plants pucker a little bit. It takes a little longer for a peperomia to pucker because they're so succulent, depending on the, the peperomia that you're, you're dealing with. But um, I just have to go in there and just like be very OCD and try to clean that out or bringing in some integrated pest management, which I usually do in the springtime and releasing them and letting them go whole hog on, uh, on those mealybugs. Oh, peperomia prostrata also in flower right now. You probably are only gonna get it in a silhouette fashion because the, the light is pretty bright coming in. But uh, this is I have growing and it's growing pretty well. Had one in my bathroom, didn't have enough light, but this seems to be growing really well. It gets bald on top, but it's also because it's not getting a lot of light. You're getting the, the light coming in from the side. So I don't mind that it balds on top a little bit. It's just natural because it's the light that I'm kind of giving it. If I'm giving it a little bit more top-down light, then you'll probably see that it won't go so bald on top. So there you have it. If I didn't answer any of your questions, you could type them below in the comments and you could watch the other two Peperomia videos if you haven't yet because there's a lot of great information there too. See you next week. Hope you liked that little pep talk today and you saw where I'm growing my peperomias and the kind of lighting and watering conditions that I'm giving them. But for right now, I'm gonna head over to the chicken coop because I've been paranoid this whole time that I'm filming because I saw a hawk there this morning stalking the chickens and now I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a concerned hen parent. Where are you? Girls, get over here. What are you doing over there? Get your bums over here. There's the hawk sitting right up over there. Come on, apricot, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. You guys are just terrible. You're gonna get mealworms last because you are the boldest. Okay, come on in. Get in. Apricot. Come here. Look at what I got. Come here. Oh, oh. I guess we got some eggs. Here you go. This is a little apricot's egg. Oh, look at a little calcium deposit right there. Imperfect egg. Some here. Oh, I've got all brown eggs today. Let's see if there's any blue. No blue eggs, just these.